Hello. New Hill Farmstead can just came out this past week. It's their Single Hop Simcoe Pale Ale. This is a beer they haven't brewed since like 2014. And this winter they've been doing all these single hop cans at the brewery. Um, and I think it's, the deal is that, is that Sean Hill went and like handpicked certain crops of hops uh, this fall. And I think that's what this one is. Cause he said that that's the way it was with their citrus single hop and their mosaic ones that came out. And I really like Simcoe hops. Um, I had some of this uh, after drinking a lot of other beers this weekend, but now I'm finally home from Vermont. This will be my first beer of the day, so I can really come at it with a fresh palate. It's 5.2% alcohol, only citra hops. They don't list the other ingredients on here, but I'm pretty sure the, the malt bill is really simple. It was canned exactly a week ago. And this was like actually one of the first single hop pale ales I've had from them in a while. And it looks really nice. Um, the cans seem a little bit squishy and, and some of the ones that I poured before had not a very nice head and seemed like they're a little bit flat or something, but this beer looks perfect actually. Maybe, I don't know, just need to sit a little bit longer. Maybe some of the cans will be a little bit flatter than others. Hill Farmstead hasn't been canning for very long, but this beer looks really Really beautiful head retention. And it's like thick soapy head with big bubbles and everything. That looks kind of perfect. And very, very grapefruity and peachy with some berry notes, but quite grassy. It's still pretty intense and fresh. Smells very sweet. Candied grapefruit. Yeah, the can I had seemed much more grapefruity and simple and grassy. This is coming with a lot more sweeter fruit aromas. Kind of like peach gummies and strawberry gummies. But with a nice green uh, fre fresh cut grass thing going on. It's not skunky though but really fruity and the greenness is not what I often get from American hops. It's not garlicky, scalliony, oniony. It's not um, minty or menthol-y. There's like a light grass with a little bit of barley going on, which is kind of the, the hallmark I find in a lot of Hill Farmstead hoppy beers is that you really, you can still notice the barley happening and there's sometimes there's really, really fresh green hop characters and things happening but it's not a lingering um bitter uh greenness and the head is still sticking around pretty light body but really bright kind of juicy but extra grassy in the flavor the green the green grass comes out even more but all those fruits are still in there i guess they dry up a little bit it's more like a peachy, grapefruity spritzer, um, but not that light bodied. It's a little bit more body and flavor and stuff than the Trillium Small Birds, but I guess this is kind of comparable to those beers. Um, it has a much nicer head and retention than those beers, because Trillium, a lot of their beers, uh, the head is pretty abysmal, especially their higher alcohol and lower alcohol beers. They figured out their Fort Point and Street IPA series, um, but none of their lower alcohol like you know hazy pails have a really nice lacing and everything like this beer which is like what I come to expect from Hill Farmstead pretty light body but still has that slight fluffiness from all the all the haze and everything and some some residual sugars not very much at all it's it finishes pretty dry but pretty low bitterness it just it's perfectly balanced I guess just enough just enough of a little bit of everything you know pour in the bottom and doesn't really generate any chunks but I mean these cans are super fresh I haven't I actually haven't even ever had a, a Hill Farmstead hoppy beer from a can until now last time I went I was able to get George their brown nail which I was like whoa this is an amazing brown nail brown nails can actually be really good um, 
And I'm glad that I got a whole bunch of this and I have plenty to share with people. Um, and I'm glad that this can now seems like it was better than the other ones I had. Maybe it's because I like, I drank it out of like a, a hotel plastic cup and it just, it's hard to serve a beer in one of those and make it look good. Um, but this one looks really nice in one of these, you know, standard Willie Betcher glasses. It reminds me a little bit of a uh, Pseudo Sue. <clears throat> so I've been drinking a bunch of Toppling Goliath lately because I've been able to get my hands on it and it was shipped out here. That's the one thing that I noticed about Pseudo Sue and some other Toppling Goliath beers is that, oh, it seems a little bit like Phil Farms to me. It has that fresh, fresh malt, actual barley flavor and aroma and it's kind of grassy, but then it's really fruity and but it finishes really clean. Like the, their yeast doesn't give you too many um, added estery notes that you can tell are just the yeast. It's, it's, this isn't like vanilla-y, it doesn't have all these cakey cotton candy things going on. It's like maybe buried super deep in there. But I feel like it really, they're really just supporting the hop fruits and I'm getting everything I can get from Simcoe in this beer. And this beer is getting pretty good ratings, even though people don't really go crazy for Simcoe anymore. That was like, Simcoe was big to be used like 10 years ago. That's when I think it's around when it first came out and it was like one of the really fruity, fruity hops when people were going crazy over. Um, and I thought I didn't like Simcoe because it was used in old fashioned, bitter West Coast style ways where I was having not fresh beers. Um, but I found out that in a fresh beer done the New England style Simcoe is like a really delicious hop. I don't think it, it has a big enough complexity of flavor to be good in a single hop beer like this. Because not many hops work with that way. Um, but this brings enough grassiness, brings a lot of fruitiness. Um, some people say that Simcoe is, is catty, it has a cat pissy type thing. I'm not getting any weird aroma. or ammonia aroma out of this. I feel like it's like more of a blend of, you know, some more potent sea hops with Simcoe can maybe create a caddy sort of thing going on. But in this one, it's just grass and kind of woodsy berries, but then some, some stone fruits. And really nice clean finish. It's, it's kind of perfect mixture of pepper and slight, um, not chalkiness on the palate, but it has a, it has a very light powdery drying on the palate, but it's not too much. It doesn't overtake the fruitiness, doesn't take that away. So that's what I found with some beers or if they're so hazy, it's all just, I'm just noticing powdery qualities and spiciness and grassiness. And this has all of those things living together equally in harmony, or I guess. And though it is light bodied, it, it has a feel on the tongue. It's not what some people might say is watery, unless you are obsessed with only really sweet, big IPAs and you only want that. This is one of the best near, near sessionable hoppy beers out there. I like it more than the Trillium Bird series. And it's lower alcohol than pseudo Sue, even though I feel like it's if there was a Simcoe pseudo Sue out there, this would it would probably be pretty similar to this. Um, and this has just the perfect haze going on. We'll see if after a month any chunks develop, but they're doing a pretty good job canning over there. And maybe in a week or a week or so it'll seem a little bit more fruity, but yeah, there's a big lingering peachy, like juicy tangerine grapefruit. It's more, yeah, it's more like f orange type fruits. Maybe as, as, as it goes on further, it'll, I'll taste more sweet citrus rather than the bitter citrus that I, that I, that I got initially. But it's a, it's, it's a really good beer. I'd give it at least 425. I think I might like Dharma Bum. That's their Simcoe IPA. It's a little bit stronger, a little bit more. Um, but I'm not going to turn down ha having this beer and I, I bought two cases of it and I don't think it'd be hard to drink this while it's still fresh. It's, it's like it's such a treat to just have, you know, just a regular old Hill Farmstead pale ale sitting around that I can have whenever I feel like it. I don't have to jump into a big growler of, you know, Abner or one of the double IPAs. 
my dream sort of came true with this one. It's not the best pale ale of all time, but it's definitely up there for like real pale ales, not these things like Pseudo Sue and Trillium's Four Point Pale Ale that are well over six and they could have easily just called them IPAs. But now it seems like in the New England style, IPA is when you're getting close to seven and then it stops right before eight. And it's really weird how what we call Pale Ales, IPAs, and India Pale Ales has moved around so much. It seems like it used to be that you could call it an IPA if it was anywhere from five to eight, but now it's like shrunk a bunch. And it's really like almost about around 6.8 to 7.8. That's what people call a single IPA almost, or even smaller than that. Um, but that's kind of stupid to talk about. Who really cares? This is a very good beer and I'm pretty comfortable calling it a pale ale. So I don't turn it up. If you can trade for this, I would do it. Um, and I'll, it might even stick around at Hill Farmstead till next Saturday because people aren't going to be like going crazy for this, like the Society in Solitude number no. four cans that sold out early this week, so I missed it. Um, but this might be a little under the radar and very worth snatching up, um, you know, from other people's forgetful, not, not being mindful of how great a simple paleo can be.